Hey guys, welcome to Arepas del Gringo, and today we're going to make arepas de queso. This is probably one of my most favorite foods um, since coming back from Colombia. I've been there many times now, and every time I go there, I just really love to try an arepa from a different place. Um, arepas are very basic. Um, they're pretty much cornmeal, um, cooked with milk and cheese, if you want cheese. Um, that's my favorite way to have them, but you can stuff them with meat, you can have an egg on top, you can have it over a variety of different foods or have it with other foods. Um, a lot of times they're had with chocolate in the morning uh, for, uh, for breakfast, or you can have them as an evening snack or as lunch. So many ways to make them, to eat them, and uh, they're, they're very, very delicious. So the first thing we want to do is open up the cornmeal. And we want to measure two cups. Measuring cup here. And you will learn to eyeball this over time. Um, so we want two cups. And as you can see, the, the texture is very fine, um, very fine cornmeal. So we'll put this in a bowl. Next thing we want to do is add a couple pinches of salt. Um, not too much, but enough to add some flavor. I'm using some coarse salt. I like the texture. Um, the next thing we want to do is add in a lot of cheese. So this is probably about a cup and a half, cup and a half of cheese. Um, as you can see, uh, you want to have a lot. In there it's going to be very texturous, with a lot of texture. Um, this. This mozzarella is a little bit longer, so it's going to be poking out of the arepa when I make it, but that's okay. Next, I want to add some milk. So I didn't use all of it, I, I left a little bit, and the consistency looks very liquid right now. But as I start, as I start to mix this around, you will see that it starts to thicken. And you just want to start working it into a ball. As you can see, it's starting to dry out. Um, and that's good. So we want to get it about the consistency of Play Doh. So, so far we've added milk, the cornmeal, and a little bit of salt. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit more cornmeal, just to give it a little more of a drier consistency. And this is what I'm talking about with the art of getting it the right texture. You'll know once once you get there, but at, once you can make a ball out of it and not have it fall apart, you're doing pretty good. So this is just a little bit more than two cups. Um, and the milk or, or water that you add um, should be about two and a half cups. Depending on how much cheese you add in, that's sort of what throw things, throws things off. So this is getting to be a really good consistency. As you can see here, it's about the consistency of Play-Doh, maybe slightly softer. This is a really, really good consistency right now, so I'm gonna, gonna leave it like that. So I'm gonna turn on the grill, or the griddle, um, and I'm gonna set it to about 300. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get my butter ready, just the salted stick of butter, and I'm gonna leave half of the paper on but I'm going to allow myself to use it as like a, a marker and just mark up the placement of where I would like to start cooking. And you will soon realize that once you start, it's going to get a little messy, so you want to have a paper towel um, with you so you can start to, to work. So I'm going to break off a little piece, and we're not going to make these too big. And I'm going to start to flatten them out and you want, you want to get about the size of a large meatball. 
you want to start to flatten it. Then I'm going to take a chunk of cheese. It may look like there's a bit in here, and we're going to seal all of that inside. And we want to make like a little pocket of cheese. Just stuff it in there, and just rework it so you, you contain all of that, all of that stuff, all of that nice cheese. And you want to keep it flat and start rolling the edges so you form a nice pocket. And you can dip your fingers in some milk and seal up the edges. It makes, it makes a nice glue to contain all of this. And it's okay if some cheese pokes through because there's a little secret to tell you when it is actually ready to take off the grill when that cheese starts to ooze out. And that is a really nice sight to see. So this is nice and round. It doesn't have to be perfect. Take your, take your butter stick and just start buttering, buttering the grill. So what I'm going to do is lay it down and push just a little bit. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt on top. And then you're going to move on to the next one. Again, about the size of a large meatball. Not too big. You want it to cook. You don't want it to take forever because you want to eat them. So, again, flatten it out into about a frisbee. Make a little bowl. Nice bowl. The edges don't need to be perfect at this point. Um, fold it. Make a little, little pocket, a little empanada. Seal it. And start molding it into the shape that we're looking for. And like I said, this is where the practice comes in. Mine looked horrible at first. And I still could do some work, but I think I got it down. Um, again, a little milk. Milk's actually really handy because it cleans your fingers off because it, it starts to dry. You don't want to add too much, make sure it's not too wet. I like to rebutter with some fresh butter and then place it on, flatten it out just a little bit. Now, depending on how you like them, you can make them a little bit higher or a little bit lower, a little wider, a little shorter. It all depends on how you want to make them. I try and make them about a half an inch tall. Um, they're not going to expand, they're not going to shrink, they're not going to... It, it's all in leaven, so there's nothing... There's no ingredient in here that's going to make it rise. So this one's a little bit smaller, so I'll add just a little less cheese. This cheese is actually really long. Um, mozzarella that is shredded pretty short actually works better. Um, but you can make them however you'd like. It all tastes the same. It probably would just give you an easier time if you used a shorter, um, shorter grain cheese. We'll milk. Seal up the edges just pretty good. Looks good. Add just a little bit more butter. Move this one over just a little bit. And I forgot to put salt on that one, so just put a little salt. Um, depending on how high of a setting you set the heat to. Um, it could definitely start to burn quicker than, than on a lower heat. So what you want to do is just take a spatula, flip it over, and you want to see this color like that. Um, some people keep them on there the whole time and then flip them and do the other side. Um, I tend to wait for this cheese to start to form this golden crust right here. This is is now getting pretty hard. Um, and then I flip it over to the other side. I have a little bit of butter here I just want to clean. Lower the heat just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to move on to my third one. So once you get this down, you can make these pretty quickly. Um, but you got to keep up because that first one is going to start to cook right away. So if you're making them for a lot of people or you need to make them, you want to serve them all nice and hot at the same time. You want to do this pretty quickly once you get it down. So it's not only just making them look good, it's doing it pretty fast. Um, because like I said, they are going to start cooking. And when everyone's hungry in the morning and they're ready for breakfast and the chocolate is nice and hot, you want these ready to go. So you got to get to it. So again, 
It's okay if cheese comes out, like I said. I mean, you can take it out, you can leave it in. If you want presentation, you can keep it out. Um, again, gonna go for a little milk in a second. Make it nice and round, or as round as possible. Just seal it up, push it down. Get the grill, some butter, put it on and push it on. Right there, maybe flip this guy. It's doing pretty good. What I also do is once I flip them, I just add just a little bit more salt. Again, this is fine grain salt. I mean, it's coarse salt, so it's probably a little more salty than your fine grain, so just keep that in mind. So if you were to do a, an image search on your search engine of choice in, in Google um, or Yahoo or Bing it, however you do it, um, you can do an image search for arepas, you'll see they all look different. They all look pretty similar, but um, everyone, like I said, makes them differently. Um, so you'll get a sense of ideas of how you can make them, how you can improve upon them, and uh, how you can add variety to a very simple and delicious treat. So when I say that I turn up the temperature or turn down the temperature, I'm talking like 5 or 10, maybe 15 degrees max. I just don't want to see a lot of smoke. What I do want to see though, is if I turn, if I turn this, see in there, you're going, to see, you're going to start to see a lot of cheese ooze out. And that is one of the greatest sights to see here um, when these are cooking, is when that cheese bubbles out. So I'm going to grab another about the size of a large meatball. And if you were to make these in a different, um, a different way you could make them, you could fill them with, with meat. You'd want to make them a little bit bigger. Um, so you could definitely, maybe two large meatballs uh, the size of, of dough you want to grab. And you don't want to fill it with anything at this point. You'd cook it and then you'd cut it with a knife when it's nice and hot. Um, and then you would, you would stuff it um, with what you like. This one's being a little stubborn. I have quite a bit of cheese in there, but you know what? I'm gonna keep it because that's gonna be a good one. A little milk. Seal up the edges. And making arepas are kind of messy. I said this before. Keep that towel nearby. My counter is no longer nice and shiny. It's all caked on with with dried dough. But you know what? It's all good. Um, it starts to form on your hands like this, so you can you can see it does get messy. Uh, so I'm gonna flip this. So it looks looks good. It's a nice it's a nice golden brown texture that we want. There we go. That one needs a little bit more. And as you can see, they're they're not perfect in shape. I'm really going to to give you the idea how to make them and how you can perfect it over time. And one of the privileges of being the one who makes the arepas is my favorite thing to do is just put a little bit of butter, drop some cheese on there. And eat it in about 30 seconds. A little, little snack. So again, we're gonna form these. The end does not have to be perfect. You just wanna Make a nice pocket for that for that cheese. And when you take these off the heat, once they're all fully cooked, it's gonna ooze. It's gonna ooze out quite nicely. Wait till it gets a nice little golden brown crust and flip that right over. Add a little salt. And again, don't let them burn, 
but you do want it to form a nice, that, that cheese is going to just really start to really form a nice protective coating on that. And it's going to trap in all the heat. And as you can see, if I push on this a little bit, you can see that it's, it's getting there. And you don't want it to be fully, fully cooked around the sides here. Um, you'll notice that it's going to start to, to expand in how it's cooked um, from the top and from the bottom. Just let it do that. And then once this is ready, let it cool and have a little snack. don't want to make them without it. Again, this is the rough state. This is what it's going to look like when you just grab that chunk and start to flatten it out. Place some cheese inside. Fold it, make that pocket. Looks like a taco with cheese coming out of it. Just pinch it and turn. Pinch it and turn. And then start to create like a pocket within the palms of your hand. And it's okay, cheese comes out, flatten it down, add just a little milk to seal up the sides, it's like a glue, a little butter on the grill, toss it on and push it. So these are getting pretty close right here, I am just about ready to start eating that one. Flip it. This one I'm going to move, looks like there's just a little more heat on the edges. We'll just get that one going. But as you can see, as I flip these, like cheese is starting to stick to the spatula. That's what you want to see. So as you can see, the cheese is starting to come out here and here and here. You can't really see it right here. That's a good thing, okay? And when it starts to form this flat um, piece of cheese that's hardened, you know it's getting really good. So I'm gonna leave this one on just for another minute. Just flip that. Flip that guy. There we go. Looking good. So the aromas that you can smell right now is, of course, cheese, <laughs> butter, and you have a, a hint of corn, but when you eat these, you don't really taste a lot of heavy corn like you think you would taste. Um, but it's more of like a, a dough or a bread type flat cake that you're eating. Um, so it's very aromatic, especially when things are, are being cooked right in front of you. So if you haven't made these before, I highly recommend it. Like this, this is this is looking really good. So I'll keep that on the on the heat just for one more minute or so. And again, you, you don't want this to cook all the way through. What you essentially want to do is get it to a hot enough temperature so the cheese starts to melt and not boil, but just start to bubble on the inside. Get my plate ready. Just start flipping. You add, got to add a little salt, just add a little salt. We are getting really close here. And they've been on for about 10 minutes. 
Um, they'll probably take about that, depending on how, how brown you want to get them, how cooked you want to get them. So what I'm going to do now is, is take a couple of these off, off the heat. Put them, on, put them on the plate. We just need a couple more minutes. It's looking really good. So, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move the grill just to the side, just, just a little bit. I want to make sure you can see this here. I'm going to break this open, and as you can see how gooey this is on the inside, that is what we're looking for. This right here. Nice stringy deliciousness. Hot off the grill, cannot go wrong. If you don't like cheese, don't put it in. You can make them um, with butter, without. Like I said, there's so much flexibility with this. Um, you can make them however you like. But this is a very, very traditional staple in the Colombian culture. Um, and they are just fantastic to eat. Ta-da. So thanks for joining me in Arepas del Gringo to make Arepas con Queso. These came out fantastic and I wish you were here because they are just delicious. Um, you need to try these. Um, you should seriously make them. Post a picture on arepasdelgringo.com and show me your version. Uh, let me know how you like to make them, what ingredients you used, and how they came out. Um, like I said, practice makes perfect with these. That's the only way to do it. You're not going to make them perfect the first time, but you know what? It doesn't matter. They're still going to taste good. Thanks again. I uh, hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time.